Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to show you a little battle, a comparison between Lightroom Classic and Luminar AI. We're going to retouch a really cool raw file shot with a medium format camera in the beautiful, amazing Valencelle, where there's a beautiful lavender. And let's see which one is going to win. All right, guys, so the battle has begun. This is one of my favorite shots of last summer. This is the Lavender Field. I shot this with a Fuji. Um, it's a Fuji GFX 50R. It's a 50 million pixel camera. Look at the details. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge photo. I shot it at f4, 100 ISO, 1 200 of a second. And look at the resolution. It's 8,256 pixel times 6,192. 50 million pixel sensor so first i'm going to retouch it in lightroom and then i'm going to retouch it in luminar and then at the end at the very end of this video i'm going to show you the magic of uh, luminar stuff that you cannot do really in lightroom so first let's do a classic retouching so i open the shadows i bring down the highlights okay i do my black point so i just move my black slider until the very thing which is dark like everything which is dark is at the darkest uh, you can hold on the option key. I like to do that uh, in Lightroom to get about, yeah, that's what you want. You see these points are purely black. I like to have 2 or 3% of purely black. And then I do my white point. Uh, same idea, but I don't want to go too far. Okay, but here comes the magic. So that's just a regular exposure that I did every time. Now, the, the hardest thing is to get the colors right. So it was a sunrise. This is very much too blue to me. So I think I'm going to warm things up here a little bit. And I'm going to add a bit of magenta because I like when it becomes a little bit, um, you know, sort of uh, on the magenta side of life. Maybe like 28, maybe even more like, uh, yes, like 7,000. Yeah, around 7,000 in a yellow and maybe around 28. Yeah, I want it to be really warm. Now, there was a, a bit of a sunrise there. So let's see if we can get it back. First thing first, I take this gradient tool. I double click on effect. I lower the exposure and I click and drag. Okay, well that's way too much lowering the exposure. Just wanted a bit, a little bit of that. Maybe add back a bit of blue in the sky. Okay, I like that. And then I, I think I want to crop this photo. Uh, this will work better as a pano. So I'm gonna go to um, three one. Three ones means not three one. Sorry, two one means it's twice larger then it is uh, high, so, and I'm gonna put it right here on the rule of third, exactly here. Okay, cool. Okay, and then maybe then I'm just gonna move my gradient a little more, make it a bit lower. Voila. Uh, I like to um, mess around with the colors a lot, so I'm gonna go to the U, and let's see here. What happens if I move my reds? Oh yeah, uh, the lavender, maybe I make it a bit more red. What about the orange? What happens with the orange? Yeah, maybe a little more orange. What about the yellow? Ooh, I'm gonna make the yellow a bit darker. Okay. And then maybe in the highlights here, I'm gonna add a little bit more, yeah, of orange just to make the sky a little bit darker. So let's see, backslash before, after. I kind of like it. I think uh, it's lacking a bit of contrast, maybe a bit of more contrast maybe a bit brighter something like that i think i like it pretty much so that's my classic retouch here in lightroom okay now let's go over to luminar so let's go over to luminar ai i am in the edit module and um, it's a bit of a different workflow so basically usually what i always start by on hands and accent is gonna Look what accent does. Don't do it too much, but I usually put it around 20 or 30. It opens the shadow, it makes the color stronger. I'm gonna do the sky on enhancer to make my sky a bit darker. I kind of like that. Yes. Uh, I've already cropped this uh, in 221 exactly like I did in Lightroom uh, because I had prepared this video before. And when it comes to light, so remember temperature, I think it was around 7,000 and then 28, uh, about on the tint. I'm trying to sort of match the colors. Okay, and then of course I'm going to do uh, my black point. Now, in, I don't know how do you do this. It doesn't work in, uh, I cannot do the black point like holding the option key or the alt key like I do uh, 
uh, in Lightroom. I, I hope they're gonna change that because I like to see my, you know, the pixel which is 100% black. So I kind of like eyeball it. And then maybe do a bit of smart contrast, uh, a bit of exposure. I'm gonna add the exposure. Uh, I definitely wanna get the highlights to go much lower. So let's compare it now. Let's go back to uh, Lightroom. See how it goes, yeah. Uh, and then let's go back to uh, Luminar. Yeah, I think I need to open the shadows a bit more. I open the shadows a bit more here and maybe do my black. Uh, and we get kind of a similar result. So um, let's go to color and do the same thing. So we can go to uh, color, we can click here, HSL, it's a little bit hidden. And same thing, let's play around here. I think I wanna make the red, the lavender a little bit more red, maybe a little more. So I just move this like right or left and see what it does. Maybe a bit more orange, uh, a bit more yellow. And voila, I think it's pretty cool. Now one feature I love, you can press the comma key and you can have this little slider. You can see like the before or the after. You can press a comma to take it out or you can click here to see the before and the after. So pretty similar result, I'm guessing. Yeah, pretty similar result. Backslash key here um, between Luminar and um, and Lightroom. So I really think Luminar is a very strong alternative. And by the way, you can get $10 off uh, on Luminar if you use the code PHOTOSURGE at the checkout. Uh, use the code PHOTOSURGE at checkout and you can get $10 off. The link is under the video. Also, you can get for free my Photography Essential book. Link is under the video. You'll get the ebook version. It's a 200 page book about. Uh, you know, my experience with uh, photography in the last 15 years, I'm gonna show you some of my best, best, best photos, taking how I shot them, which camera I use, what was my settings, and really a lot of tricks about composition. It's totally free, just you can get it right under the video. Okay, so next, next is the magic of Luminar. Check this out. I'm gonna go here to sky, and then I'm gonna change the sky in one click. I'm gonna go here, and let's go for like sunset clouds, for example. And let's go for this guy. Bam! I changed the sky. Now, the sunrise was on this side. So to match it, we're going to have to flip it, which is possible here. You go to orientation, you click on flip, and boom, the sunrise is exactly the same. And then uh, we can also go here to uh, augmented sky, and maybe we can take and add some birds. Boom! Some little birds, and you can position them how you want it. Let's put it, let's put in there, maybe even smaller, um, something like that, and voila. And that's kind of cool. I mean, what you can do, uh, I can also, you know, I can go in, go also to like a landscape, and they have like a golden hour filter, which is kind of crazy. And the good thing is, like for example, like golden hour filter, I can do it this way, but that's way too much, so I can just go here. And I can brush that effect. I can just brush that effect here, maybe, just for where the sun uh, sunrise there. And check it out. Now it's only before, after that uh, sort of very golden hour is only there in the corner. So I mean, this software is really crazy. Uh, I really think it's a very strong alternative. It's becoming more and more stable. I had not. I just finished a masterclass on it, and I have not had a single crash. Uh, which was not the case for before. So Luminar AI is very stable. I really, really, really like it. And uh, so you can get $10 off the software, clicking the link below if you want to. So what do you think, Lightroom or Luminar?